I am uh, warning you all that I'm starting the recording on this, uh, just so we can share it with others if we, uh, uh, they have a chance to come and take a look at this. You can't make it this morning. Um, we want to give you a quick overview of uh, the Adirondack Park and the Adirondack Park Agency. And uh, 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 this is really through the lens of both conservation uh, and social issues that we're working on. Uh, I think you'll understand why it's organized the way it is, but uh, <clears throat> it, uh, I think we'll give you some perspective on uh, how the park got to be the way it is today and uh, some of the things that we have to keep in mind while we're, uh, we're working on issues uh, that affect us uh, in the modern times. So uh, let's uh, try sharing the screen here. All right. I'm going to try uh, uh, not to go back to the very beginning in that uh, uh, that would take us essentially to uh, uh, 4.5 billion years ago. That's probably too far back. So I'm going to start around 90 BC -E, uh, with uh, uh, the native peoples who are uh, in the Adirondack region now uh, already there. Uh, uh, the people of the Longhouse had uh, displaced the uh, Brewertons of, uh, of the Champlain Valley at that point. Um, all right, there we go. Now the parks, uh, uh, after uh, the uh, last ice age, about 17,000 years ago, uh, people started moving back into the region. Uh, but a thousand years later, the uh, Haudenosaunee culture was still dominating much of what uh, we call New York State today. Um, now, this is a slide I could repeat about a thousand times in here, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, but uh, suffice it to say, about every 50 or 75 years, a major, a major epidemic killed a great number of Europeans and, uh, and uh, eventually started uh, in the other direction, killing uh, uh, native people at, uh, on a pretty regular basis. Uh, a new nemesis for us, coal emerged in 1233, first time Newcastle, they started burning it for uh, a heat and uh, then moved on to other things. Uh, around 1400, uh, weather patterns were a lot colder than they are today. Um, uh, the uh, uh, villages of the Haudenosaunee were relatively small and compact. Uh, but they had uh, pretty much developed the uh, palisade uh, and uh, and longhouse uh, that they used to uh, to defend themselves um, and to uh, and to live in. Uh, 1455. Uh, a lot of people point to the Romanus Pontifex uh, Pontifex as the uh, justification for most of the seizure of uh, native lands by uh, Christian cultures. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, uh, Pope Nicholas had issued. Uh, it made a lot of people feel better about the next four or 500 years. Uh, a growing society by 1500, about 100 years later, uh, the Haudenosaunee villages showed signs of being much larger than they were just, uh, just back in 1400. Uh, nearly uh, the population was clearly thriving. Uh, they didn't call the mountains Adirondack though. Uh, they had a couple of different words for uh, the region that uh, we're in now. Um, and uh, uh, I would love some uh, additional assistance on uh, making this section of the uh, presentation clearer. Uh, if you didn't guess, you're uh, guinea pigs on this today. So uh, uh, I'd like to uh, improve this as we go, but uh, you're getting the first, you're getting the first dose. Uh, mid 1500s, <coughs> France shows up, uh, Jacques Cartier, uh, found the locals eating maple syrup, kidnapped a couple of them, dragged them back to France, uh, came back, got stuck in the snow, nearly died and was saved by uh, uh, the uh, practice of boiling the inner bark of the, the cedar tree, uh, uh, essentially to prevent scurvy. There's a pretty high vitamin C content, um, something that uh, Europeans were not aware of at the time. The uh, uh, term Adirondack, dates itself uh, back to uh, a couple of different possibilities here, but uh, both of them point to the idea that uh, uh, people eat bark. Um, essentially, uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, 
evidence that it was used as an insult by uh, the uh, uh, Mohawk nation to describe their enemies in the Algonquin nations. Um, it also could be referring to the, uh, the fact that the, they occasionally made tea from bark. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Galileo was inventing a thermometer. Uh, Kepler was uh, 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 suggesting that the earth revolved around the sun and uh, that information was not well received. Uh, 1600s, France comes back. Samuel de Champlain uh, comes into the lake that would bear his name, shoots a couple of people, uh, kills two of them, uh, sets off uh, hostilities in the last for about a century and a half, um, and declares that he sees snow on the Green Mountains in July, which is uh, interesting. He also appears to be the first person listed as seen champ. Uh, uh, the sea monster of Lake Champlain. Uh, Hendrick Hudson uh, defies orders from his uh, commanders, sails up the Hudson in search of China, and finds Albany instead, establishes Fort Orange. <clears throat> Not too much longer after that, uh, the Haudenosaunee start buying firearms from the Dutch at Fort Orange. Uh, first introduction of uh, uh, that we know of uh, in a major way of uh, gunpowder to the region and uh, firearms and epidemics uh, managed to, uh, uh, the Europeans brought more than guns with them. They brought uh, smallpox, chickenpox, and a lot of other diseases that uh, the locals had no uh, defenses for. Now, Mayflower shows up. Uh, on there are dandelions and honeybees. Uh, I think you all know how that's gone so far. Um, the Dutch and uh, the Mohawks tended to uh, uh, trade with one another. The Dutch were very interested in beaver skin pelts. Uh, the Mohawks at the time were having a rather uh, 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 strong rivalry with the Mohegan, Mohegan bands nearby. Um, this was a, a time of uh, uh, great tumult and violence in the uh, capital region, what is now the capital region. Um, as the uh, struggle over the uh, fur trade began. <clears throat> Smallpox again in 1630s, uh, both north and south of the Canadian border. And uh, uh, at this point, about by 1640, uh, it looks as though the beaver is just about gone from the region. Um, 1650s, British start cutting white pine trees for their ships. Uh, then they invade New York, uh, take it from the Dutch, the Dutch take it back, decide they don't want it, uh, and in the Treaty of Westminster, uh, they give New York to, uh, to Great Britain. And there's another smallpox epidemic, 1670s. Strangely enough, British government resolves that Indians shall not be held as slaves in New York, 1679. Uh, the French come down, they fortify Fort Anne, but what becomes Fort Anne, uh, near uh, where Lake George and Lake Champlain meet on the west, uh, eastern side, um, and uh, it doesn't take long, they burn Schenectady, and uh, uh, sorry, I didn't stay on that one long enough, but you can see that Schenectady managed to put up a monument to the fact that it was burned in, uh, in the 1600s. Uh, I've never seen the Chamber of Commerce anywhere do that before. Um, New York was a slaveholding state at the time. There were 19,000 colonists, give or take a few thousand, and 2,000 of them were black enslaved persons. Uh, first Earl of Bellamont, uh, the Irishman who was sent here to be provincial governor, was the first person that we can find in state law to prohibit the cutting of trees. Uh, this is white pine, and to encourage replanting. Queen Anne's War, uh, didn't have a huge impact on the Adirondacks uh, politically other than to move the border a little bit. Uh, it established the area around Gary Hyrick's old house uh, up on the uh, Split Rock uh, Wild, uh, in the uh, Split Rock Wild Forest as the border between uh, New York and New France. And it would stay that way until the end of uh, uh, the War of 1812. First term, Ranger uh, was used. Uh, first time the term Ranger was used it was uh, here in the United States, the British Army's uh, scouts and foragers. <clears throat> 1725, uh, local 
local natives were very concerned about the uh, uh, hostilities going on in, in uh, Europe, and they're worried that it's going to spill over into the United States. This is also the first time that they make a formal appeal to stop the sale of alcohol into the community. 1730s, uh, the British move into Fort uh, La Presentice, I'm sorry, Fort St. Frederick. Uh, um, this is the, uh, the place of Crown Point and uh, establish a, uh, uh, a fort there where they would raid into uh, uh, the English villages to below uh, for the next 15 or 20 years. <clears throat> George Washington's born uh, 1732, same year Bernard's barn was built. <laughs> um, Canisetago. Uh, the uh, Onondaga chief warned the uh, English settlers that the, the war was not going to be good for anybody uh, in Europe and that uh, if they were smart, they'd think about forming confederacy similar to the one that the uh, Iroquois had created. Sir William Johnson shows up, uh, establishes a headquarters in what's now Johnstown. Uh, uh, invites the uh, Iroquois to live with him. Uh, Mohawks uh, become uh, quite close uh, to him, both politically and in uh, uh, intermarrying into his family. Uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, the chief of Indi Indian Affairs for uh, New York, uh, right up until the, he passes away just before the American Revolution. Um, now, Vermont didn't exist at this time. Uh, New York owned both sides of Lake Champlain, or at least it thought it did. Um, and uh, Governor Clinton uh, essentially uh, told the governor of New Hampshire that uh, he didn't own anything until he got to the Connecticut River. There was some dispute over that from New Hampshire. Ben Franklin uh, doesn't get any further than Catasetago got uh, saying that uh, we should be confederating. Um, that his plan was uh, uh, at least given consideration in Albany before it was rejected by the other colonies. French and Indian War breaks out. We've got hostilities between France and Britain again. Um, the border is in the middle of the Adirondack Park. The Mohawk Valley is a place of enormous uh, conflict and uh, a lot of back and forth uh, atrocities on both sides. At the end of the war though, uh, uh, New France doesn't exist anymore. England owns essentially everything. Uh, all the way to Louisiana, which is a little bigger than the current Louisiana, as you might recall. Um, but uh, Canada still starts in the middle of the Adirondacks. <clears throat> right after the end of the war, uh, uh, the French and Indian War, Pontiac's Rebellion uh, in the Midwest caused a great deal of concern here in New York as well when uh, a number of the tribes uh, essentially rose up against the uh, uh, colonial, the still British government at the time, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Haudenosaunee decided they were going to sit this one out. Um, the British start imposing taxes to pay for their wars that are less and less uh, popular. Uh, new maps are drawn showing where New York is, where Connecticut is, and the uh, Mohawk nations. As you can see, Tryon County is pretty big. Uh, and empty, as is uh, uh, Charlton County, uh, which make up most of what is now the Adirondack Park, and they are still uncharted for the, for the most part. Uh, Parks Iron Age started in the 1760s with the Cheever Iron Works in Fort Henry and uh, in uh, Skanesboro. Uh, this is about the same time as the Boston Massacre. Ethan Allen, who claimed part of Vermont, uh, was considered an outlaw in New York, and uh, there was a reward posted for his arrest. Boston Tea Party happens in 73, dressed as Mohawks. They were not Mohawks. Uh, these were the Sons of Liberty who dumped the tea in the, in the harbor. Mohawks get a bad rap anyway. Uh, Haudenosaunee decide as the American Revolution breaks out that they're going to stick with the British government that they've been sticking with the last couple of hundred years. Uh, this proves fateful for a number of uh, 
the Juan Michelli. Now, the, the exception to this is that the Oneidas and the Tuscaroras do not uh, stay with Britain. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, 1774, King George III says all the white pines, the Adirondacks belong to him. And uh, Governor Tryon raises the bounty five times for uh, Ethan Allen. Uh, Allen decides to get some revenge. He and Benedict Arnold uh, took Fort Ticonderoga in 75, gave the cannons to Henry Knox, who used them to lift the siege of Boston. But the uh, decision by the Oneida and the Tuscarora really broke the uh, uh, covenant chain of the uh, Confederacy, uh, for, uh, whereas the uh, uh, Mohawk and uh, other aligned members of the Haudenosaunee tended to move uh, toward Canada at this point and uh, get out of harm's way uh, <clears throat> and uh, join the uh, Canadian side, uh, essentially the British side of the war. Um, Racket Lake got its name from when uh, Johnson's son and his party on their way to Canada uh, left their snowshoes there. And uh, this statue of the Oneida uh, and Tuscarora uh, with uh, the colonial government uh, is a reminder, uh, but uh, uh, we'll see in a little while that this is not uh, something that, uh, not a lasting piece. Now, Cherry Valley and the Mohawk Valley uh, really was attacked pretty badly a couple of times, uh, burned uh, essentially uh, twice, um, but uh, uh, afterward, uh, General Washington ordered a uh, destruction of uh, non-aligned Haudenosaunee villages, and uh, the, the colonial army uh, burned 41 of them. In the 1780s, the war ends, um, and the land rush for the Adirondacks uh, begins. The Crown had owned, essentially, uh, and given out land grants to the entire park. Uh, the colonial government decided that that was its job and started to uh, uh, started to do the same, and New York gave up Vermont. Uh, Philip Schuyler uh, of Albany, Alexander Hamilton's son, uh, son-in-law, I'm sorry, uh, he uh, uh, went to Europe, saw the canals, decided we needed some, came back and promoted, proposed both the Erie Canal and the Champlain Canal. Yakusasti, uh, uh, Mohawk Nation is established. Uh, the reservation is essentially where most of the Mohawks who uh, remained in New York were uh, uh, moved uh, after uh, the American Revolution. Around this time, we saw that uh, there was an interest in emancipation. This uh, was uh, not done in a very speedy way. It uh, took a long time, almost uh, 30 years before uh, the law really went in fully into effect. This is a picture of uh, uh, charcoal kilns on the shore of Chattagay Lake uh, in uh, 1808 because of the rapidly disappearing forests, <clears throat> as you can see partly in this photograph, uh, the uh, practice of using state lands to supply these kilns was banned. Uh, but uh, the racket was, uh, and the St. Regis were both public highways for logs at this point. Uh, the Elba Iron Works started uh, uh, digging up iron in the Lake Placid neighborhood and uh, local governments were uh, paying bounties to kill wolves. Uh, Great Britain decided it wanted uh, the Adirondacks back uh, along with the rest of America. It tried to get it, invaded Plattsburgh, attempting it uh, was repelled by uh, Macomb and McDonough. I'll let you look at that at your leisure. Um, and the Oneida unfortunately found that they were no longer welcome about 1820 and uh, were uh, pushed out of New York State uh, in the Mohawk Valley and wound up in Wisconsin. Erie and Champlain canals opened in the 1820s, uh, both fed by Adirondack water. First railroad, 1831, between Albany and Schenectady. 1832, circa, uh, beaver is no longer quite the fashionable hat uh, making item it used to be. Uh, it takes the pressure off, but it's probably too late at this point. Uh, 
first appearance of the word Adirondack is in Ebenezer Emmons Geological Survey in 1834. Last run of salmon out of the Osable, 1838. Uh, Lake Champlain's pollution at this point was too great to sustain the Atlantic salmon population. This is essentially when it, uh, it went away and had to be replaced eventually with the Pacific salmon population that's there now. Photography is embedded during the Civil War. Before then, paintings were really the only way people saw the Adirondacks unless they traveled there themselves. There were a couple, couple of hundred tanneries operating. Uh, not many beaver left, the wild turkey was gone, and the wolverine was pretty much extirpated except for the Northern Adirondacks. 1841, Solomon Northup gets kidnapped and uh, uh, dragged off to slavery in Louisiana. At the time, there were 28 anti-slavery societies in the Adirondacks. Uh, Garrett Smith had established eight suffrage settlements in the, uh, in the Adirondacks where uh, people of any race could uh, go to uh, get the $250 in property necessary in order to uh, win the right to vote. Now, uh, interesting uh, that the voters in Clinton, Essex, Franklin, Warren, and Washington counties supported a state referendum on suffrage in 1846, but it did not pass. Uh, this is uh, in the uh, 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 slideshow. It, there's a lot of detail here. I'm not going to go through all of this. So you can look at this at your leisure. But this is a good show, uh, a good rundown of the uh, suffrage uh, settlements and where they were. Prisons enter uh, the picture in 1845 uh, with the construction at Clint, at, of Clinton Correctional in Danamora. <clears throat> the big boom is created in, uh, uh, on the Hudson and uh, the logging operation. This is an actual picture of the Hudson River uh, at the big boom. And uh, commercial white pine is pretty much exhausted in the park at this point. Philosopher's Camp is held 1858 out at Bollinsby Pond. Acid rain first appears in the lexicon. Scottish scientist Robert Angus Smith describes its impact on Great Britain. John Brown leaves his farm on the suffrage settlement in, of Timbuktu, uh, goes to uh, Kansas, uh, causes some trouble there, goes to Harper's Ferry, uh, and uh, is hanged after, uh, afterward, and his body is brought back to North Elba, where the uh, state historic site is located. <laughs> Seneca Ray Stoddard, a Troy native, uh, became the first um, prominent photographer in the Adirondacks. <clears throat> His guidebooks uh, uh, bring travelers from all over the world. The end of the Civil War, uh, we start to see a push for conservation, uh, both expressed in art and in, uh, and in uh, uh, the writing of the time, uh, especially uh, uh, Thoreau and uh, the New York Times calling for a central park for the world in the Adirondacks. <clears throat> 1870s, logging companies uh, proliferate. Uh, every forestry, uh, I'm sorry, forestry uh, is taught at every land grant college in the country. And not surprisingly, the Little Ice Age comes to an end. <clears throat> In the 1870s, the legislature started uh, trying to put the brakes on some of uh, the destruction in the Adirondacks. President Grant uh, authorizes the first national park at Yellowstone, and the State Park Commission recommends the creation of an Adirondack park. Railroads continue to be built throughout the Adirondacks. And water is starting to disappear in certain places. Uh, the Erie and Champlain canals are getting low. New York City has three serious water shortages in five years. They actually contemplate using Lake George as a water source. 1885, Governor Hill creates a forest preserve. <coughs> Excuse me, and something called the Forever Wild Law. You'll see if you examine this carefully, that it's a little different from the current Forever Wild Clause. Um, road salts used for the first time in Paris, 1887. Park gets created by Governor Roswell Flower of Watertown, creating it by signing a bill 
Uh, he also repeals the forever wild law at the same time um, and proposes the sale of timber leases on lakeside forest preserve and uh, a sale of isolated parcels of forest preserve. At the time, the Adirondack Park's creation, it's 2.8 million acres. Syracuse comes to the rescue. Um, during the Constitutional Convention of 1894, uh, uh, Lewis Marshall leads the floor debate calling for the Forever Wild Clause. He gets some support from Brooklyn and New York City's uh, commercial interests. And uh, Marshall's sons go on to found the Wilderness Society. And uh, uh, I'll be happy to share more information on the Bob Marshall Great Wilderness and Wildlands Complex. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the Forever Wild Clause, which now talks about not leasing or selling timber or that sort of thing. And uh, it is ensconced in the Constitution. The attempts to undo this again uh, are immediate. Uh, the first uh, constitutional amendment is only two years later, it is rejected. Association for the Protection of the Adirondacks is formed, Adirondack Mountain Club a couple of decades later. And right about the same time, the Whitney's tax break starts. Uh, they get enrolled in something called the uh, Fisher Act uh, Forest Tax Abatement Program. It freezes their assessment at 1926 levels where they remain to this date. Uh, epidemic again, uh, this time Spanish flu, 700,000 people dead. Uh, Saranac Lake escapes a lot of the uh, death toll, and mainly because it's already dealing with tuberculosis on a regular basis. And uh, uh, strangely enough, they find that taking precautions makes a difference. Acid rain in America, Gene Likens identifies it for the first time at Hubbard Brook in New Hampshire. Howard Zahnheiser finishes the Wilderness Act after 66 revisions, staring out at the Adirondacks while he's doing it, and the Forest Preserve becomes a national landmark. State bans the use of DDT to control black flies in 1965, but they keep using neurotoxins till about 1992 when the Adirondack Council persuades the towns to stop. 67, Rockefeller's brother Lawrence decides maybe a national park would be a good idea in the High Peaks region. Uh, the voters rejected a constitutional amendment for a, a uh, ski center, uh, essentially in the Blue Ridge Wilderness Area, uh, or what would become the Blue Ridge Wilderness Area. Uh, Northway opens, and uh, Rockefeller is the first to propose a highway across the top of the Adirondacks. Happily, he did not propose any money for it. It's a bad idea and it's one that has lingered for a long time. Hopefully it'll go away eventually, but it doesn't seem to be something that uh, dies easily. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we, we got ourselves in 1970, a new Department of Environmental Conservation, a new Federal Clean Air Act. And uh, uh, a couple of years later, a new Adirondack Park Agency, private land use and development plan, a state land master plan, and a New York State Freshwater Wetlands Act. And Bernard's gonna talk about that stuff in a couple of seconds. Here is the definition of wilderness from the State Land Master Plan. I'm not gonna read through it, but it's here if you wanna to refer to it at any time. I think uh, uh, this is a, a pretty good way to uh, get a sense of what the legal uh, ramifications are for classifying a wilderness area. And uh, Valcor Island gets purchased in 72, and the park is enlarged essentially to its current size. 75, the Adirondack Council is formed at the Rockefeller Brothers Family Fund offices in New York City. Uh, and the park agency is immediately uh, under um, pressure from uh, critics and uh, not only is there a, a bill immediately introduced to eliminate the park agency, but uh, uh, there is one passed that substitutes what were at the time oh. <clears throat> criminal penalties for violating the Park Agency Act, if anybody can believe that. Um, um, and, and they were substituted for civil penalties. Oh. As for me, the state really started monitoring chemistry of the lakes in 1976. 
uh, the legislature passed the first acid brain law uh, almost 10 years later. Congress amended the Clean Air Act in 1990 to create the nation's first acid rain program. And uh, the current federal budget uh, actually looks to finish the job with a critical load standard. That is about it in terms of the history of the park up to the, the current neighborhood. Um, uh, rather than take questions at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Bernard and have him move into the, unless there's something immediate that uh, someone would like to press, I'm gonna have him move into the presentation. Questions, anybody? No? Bernard. Uh, can you hear me, Jordan? Everyone? I can hear you fine. Excellent. Okay. Um, so um, uh, I was um, uh, told by John that uh, what my topics were yesterday, but fortunately he knows I can talk extensively about any topic. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the park agency. Essentially, uh, uh, the park agency act and all the relevant regulations and provisions that were established in the early 1970s are still intact uh, with the one or two very minor exceptions the apa act has not been touched in 50 years and that's the time frame we're talking about uh, now uh, and which is extremely unusual for any provision of law in new york state especially one that affects 20 percent of the entire land mass of the state of new york uh, so uh, the, the essential uh, uh, package of uh, laws and regulations that the APA uh, administers has been in, uh, together for almost 50 years. And uh, that is essentially the APA Act, which was passed by the legislature. And by the way, uh, these are uh, this is all a product, the recommendations of the Temporary Commission on the Future of the Adirondacks that Harold Hochschild uh, chaired, and that was a response to uh, uh, Nelson Rockefeller's brother's proposal for a federal uh, uh, federal park in, uh, in the Adirondacks. Uh, and so their recommendations were uh, in many ways uh, put into law uh, over a couple of years with a few adjustments uh, made to satisfy local legislators. Uh, but Nelson Rockefeller uh, not only was uh, greatly influential um, uh, leader, but uh, at the time, uh, both the uh, uh, New York State Senate and the New York State uh, Assembly were uh, the same party and, and Nelson's party. So uh, he had a great deal of influence in getting things passed. Um, so, uh, so in addition to this, the act and its regulations implement, <clears throat> implementing it, the other uh, major components of what the uh, uh, park agency administers of the state land master plan. And the state land master plan basically envisions how state lands are going to be managed. Uh, and that uh, uh, was put into place. And the short history of that is that uh, there was a great reluctance to go back and touch it for many, many years for fear that it would, uh, uh, the floodgates would open and uh, the opposition to these to the act and the management of state lands would be overwhelming. Uh, since that point in time, there have been selective changes to the master plan. Uh, basically, DEC proposes and the APA signs off on, on how things are going to be managed. <coughs> the other more controversial component is the Adirondack Park land use and development plan. And that uh, man, uh, is a, a, a blueprint for uh, the use of state uh, excuse me, of private lands throughout the park, as you well know, um, that uh, is produced the uh, multicolor um, map that uh, that uh, people are, should be familiar with, and uh, and and manages or, or dictates uh, the management of private lands as they are classified, and they're classified essentially thanks to George Davis of the Adirondack Council. Um, uh, they're uh, managed by their capacity to uh, their carrying capacity, basically. So it's it's a density based uh, um, uh, plan from hamlets, the most dense to uh, to rural and uh, uh, and 
uh, other classifications that are based on a, a certain number of acres per housing uh, start. Uh, so um, that basically is the, is the uh, format for uh, the classification. Um, at the time, it was a very innovative and uh, a novel land use approach. Uh, it's been eclipsed in, in some ways uh, uh, since then, but unchanged. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah. I, I just want to point out a couple of quick things. Uh, uh, what The reason for the controversy over the state land master plan mainly was wilderness and the idea that there would be roadless places in the forest preserve permanently. Um, correct? I just want to... Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, in the private land use and development plan, the, the major controversy is that it uh, prevented folks from uh, uh, putting anything anywhere they wanted to, essentially, which was allowed in the Adirondacks for the first couple of centuries that uh, New York existed. So um, uh, most of the towns didn't have any zoning or even capacity for planning. And uh, the park agency coming in to provide both of those things was seen as an imposition of state will on local uh, uh, franchise. Sorry for the interruption. No, oh, no, that's quite all right. Jump in, we feel safe. The um, and fill in, please. Um, the uh, um, uh, to your point, um, the uh, uh, park agency still struggles with one aspect of this plan. The plan, the, the concept originally was that because there was no zoning in most uh, Adirondack communities, that uh, if a local governments adopted uh, land use measures that are equally protective or more protective of the environment uh, than what was established in the, uh, in the um, private land use plan, uh, they could reassume control of smaller projects, non-major non projects, as they do uh, in the hamlets, uh, with, the exception of, with some exceptions. For example, uh, tall buildings are still require an APA uh, review and, and, and permit. Um, but uh, that did not actually occur uh, for the great majority of the 50 years. Very few local governments uh, adopted any plans that and submitted them to the park agency to be, uh, to be accepted and, and resume control. So that uh, fundamental uh, assumption that local governments would be eager to reestablish control, they were, uh, uh, they were, that did not occur, uh, partly because uh, there was a movement, as John mentioned, to not cooperate whatsoever with the, with the park agency, with the state. And secondly, uh, if you took over control, you also assume those costs. So as a result, the park agency has been saddled with uh, uh, the vast majority of the, uh, of, the, of the controversy with the park agency has been over minor projects, uh, mostly setbacks from, from water bodies. Uh, we're talking uh, decks, garages, boathouses, uh, all things that would be minor projects in, in, uh, uh, in any other uh, land use plan. Um, the other, uh, one of the other concessions made uh, in the creation of the park agency was the uh, local government review board. Uh, the local governments uh, have a representative on the agency non-voting uh, that that person is uh, receives all the materials and is uh, offered the opportunity to provide some input, and that was uh, a, a vehicle for a very long time for local governments to uh, object to what was happening, uh, and now it's sort of matured into uh, a sort of a lobbying arm for the for the local governments and also a voice for uh, local government considerations. So. Um, they've had very few people uh, uh, representing them. Uh, one of them was from Chestertown, a, a fellow named Fred Monroe, uh, who is an attorney. Um, and Fred and I are, are historically linked. Uh, we both went to Syracuse Law School and alphabetically Molesky and Monroe sat next to each other. So uh, in the morning class at 8 a.m., Fred would bring the newspaper and share it with me. And uh, our court, our, our uh, our career uh, choices diverged after that, but uh, we, uh, it was nice to see, uh, see Fred on a regular basis um, uh, in between 1990 and 2005, which is uh, when I was with the Adirondack Council. 
Um, the other uh, two important acts that uh, park agency administers is the uh, Freshwater Wetlands Act in the park. And the big distinction, um, and uh, which is going to be uh, come up again because of some proposals from the governor this year, uh, is that uh, wetlands uh, that are mapped outside the park of 12.5 acres or more are regulated freshwater wetlands. Uh, inside the park, it's merely one acre. So uh, there's a much more intense uh, protection for wetland bodies uh, in, in the park. And that, uh, that has been administered by the park agency fairly effectively um, over time. Um, the last act that the agency administers is the Wild Scenic and Recreational Rivers Act. And uh, two Adirondack Council figures, uh, Clarence Petty and Gary Randorf, uh, were a great deal responsible for the establishment of that. Those provisions and specific uh, river segments in the Adirondacks, as uh, Clarence and Gary had the misfortune to be assigned to paddle most of these rivers in the Adirondacks and, and uh, define their uh, desirability to be included under protections in the act. And that's actually how I met uh, Gary Randolph. Uh, originally, I was the executive director of the then Environmental Planning Lobby, now Environmental Advocates. And Gary was coming down to the legislature to uh, advocate for including some new study rivers uh, in the Wild and Scenic Recreation Rivers Act. Uh, so those are the major elements that that were uh, that the agency uh, administers, um, and uh, the uh, uh, composition of the uh, of the agency has always been controversial uh, for a number of years. Uh, during supposedly during the Mario Cuomo years, um, the there was very little turnover on the agency board. Uh, at one point in time, the majority of the commissioners were overstaying their uh, their terms, uh, and under the unique provisions of, of the uh, Park Agency Act, uh, if you are not replaced or resigned, you stay in office until you will resign or are replaced. So it was possible for people to stay at great length, uh, and uh, some uh, very famous Adirondack characters uh, served for a great deal of time, such as Peter Payne on the uh, on the Park Agency Board and Elizabeth Thorndike, which you may recalls uh, a name. So um, my role after uh, it was uh, uh, in the 1990 to 2005 was to work with our Albany office uh, and, and the Elizabethtown office to coordinate both our review of projects, which is what councils uh, was very active in, uh, at, proposed at the Adirondack Park Agency. And ultimately one of those was the, the Whitney subdivision. Uh, and also to uh, advocate for uh, bills and, and frankly, um, it kill a lot of bad bills uh, that came up uh, during the legislative session. Uh, one Ron Stafford, a uh, longtime senator from the Adirondacks, uh, every two years is when, when he ran for re-election, he would uh, uh, submit a host of bills, including abolishing the a APA, uh, uh, and they were great politics for him. Uh, they really weren't going to go anywhere, uh, given the fact that after 1975, the uh, assembly was uh, uh, controlled by a Democratic Party, and, uh, and, and the assembly was enthusiastic supporters of, uh, of the park agency. So um, during that period of time, 1990, um, the uh, governor uh, uh, Cuomo uh, was persuaded to establish a second Commission on the Future of the Adirondacks in the 21st Century, and those uh, recommendations will be, were equally uh, controversial uh, and uh, created uh, a great outcry and uh, great tumult in the Adirondacks between 1990 and 1993. Um, the other big activity by the, age, uh, by the Adirondack Council during this period, of course, was uh, uh, dealing with and assisting uh, both uh, Mario Cuomo and George Pataki with uh, dealing with the, the great transition in land holdings in the Adirondacks. The timber companies were basically abandoning the Adirondacks uh, and uh, uh, Finch Prine and uh, International Paper and Champion uh, all selling off their, their resources over time um, and large estates like the Whitney Estate being broken up um, 
but most importantly, um, we were able to revisit the acid rain issue, which in 1990, uh, the uh, uh, United States Congress passed the uh, Clean Air Act amendments in 1990 that established the cap and trade program for acid rain, uh, set a uh, target uh, to uh, minimize uh, emissions. Um, and uh, as John will be able to regale you in great detail, um, the, uh, um, uh, the, it, wow. it turned out a number of studies that were required by, as a condition of his support by uh, uh, Patrick Moynihan, our, our uh, US Senator, uh, those reports came in and showed that the 1990 Act uh, was insufficient uh, to uh, protect the Adirondacks from massive rain. And after a 15-year campaign, really, um, the Adirondack Council and its uh, other organizations were successful in getting changes to the regulations uh, having and getting them through uh, uh, the, the, the labyrinth of uh, court challenges, including uh, going to the Supreme Court more than once. Uh, and uh, and now uh, the park is enjoying uh, a respite from acid rain, and uh, and great uh, uh, greatly due to the work of the Adirondack Council over time, starting with uh, um, Gary Randolph uh, back in the in 1980s, and uh, a fellow named Dan Plumley, uh, who was on our staff and. Uh, was also quite active in that. So anyway, that's the quick summary. Uh, I saw you had a couple of recommendations for books. Uh, John, uh, one that just came out is that A Wild Idea by Brad Edmondson. I think it was being casually discussed uh, when I first came on. Uh, I highly recommend there's, that. Whoops. There's this thing too. Yes. <laughs> oh, trust me, I was getting to it. <laughs> and, uh, and my book was just published this month uh by SUNY Press uh and it covers that that period of 1990 to 2005 and uh, in addition to the acid rain stories and the story of the Whitney uh uh park acquisition other land acquisitions it also has a number of other stories of issues that uh, were less celebrated but the council was still very influential on so that's my summary John okay well we uh kept people a little longer than we advertised but uh uh, so we're going to wrap the presentations there, but uh, if folks have any questions, I'll be more than happy to stick around a few minutes and answer any of those. Or if you took notes, want to uh, ask something uh, in more detail, please don't hesitate to send me uh, a note on anything that you saw today. And uh, if you've got suggestions for uh, uh, more appropriate language in some location, I'm uh, totally open to those suggestions. This, as I said, is uh, an experiment uh, that you were the uh, guinea pigs for. So uh, thank you very much for standing still for the torture um, and uh, giving us the opportunity to try this out. Um, and uh, let me uh, be quiet and see if anybody has questions. Okay. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, and uh, Diane, thank you for organizing this. We had uh, a great crowd, and uh, I, it was, I, I hope this was useful in some way. Thank you. Yes, please send along your feedback to John. That would be appreciated. Right, Anne? This is coming out of the Governance Committee to do these little, little bits of board education. Okay.